Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate your attention. So, right now we're going to cover the ancient goddess figure, particularly the ancient goddess Ishtar, and also the relation to fertility of the ancient fertility rituals, which are very common and the foundation of most, if not all, of our modern religious as well as cultural and societal traditions. So it, it all of this stuff comes from much more ancient roots, and it all it, it's all connected. It's all related because they all have the same roots. Everything has the same root meanings. It all comes from an original source, or many original sources that all shared common bonds, common roots. So we're going to cover the goddess figure Ishtar, also known as Istre, and today obviously known as Easter, was the ancient goddess of fertility and also sex. And so the the ritual of Ishtar, the celebration of Ishtar, was also a fertility ritual of sex and intercourse. In the ancient temples, on Easter Sundays, the ladies would come to the temple with just their Easter bonnets on. So. And they were also required, as part of this ritual, part of this tradition, to basically it's, it's a sacred, considered a sacred form of prostitution, where all the women would go to the temples, and it was understood that they would stay at this temple until they had until they had sex with a stranger, a complete stranger. The men would pay any woman of their choice, and the women had no choice. They had it was a sacred right that they had to participate in this act, regardless of choice or you know or preference, and all of that was null and void. So, and if they didn't. And they had to stay at the temple until they, until they did the deed, until the deed was done. They had to complete this act, or else they were cast out. They were excluded. They were exiled from the inner esoteric wisdom and common bonds with the rest of the culture, which is a common, common terms used in Freemasonry. The esoteric is the inner house of wisdom. The exoteric is the outer the outer shell, the outer mask. It's the lies, the false pretenses that are fed to the masses so that it will keep them beating around that bush of the inner esoteric truth. So think of this as the symbol of Saturn, because that's where this essentially is all related to Saturn. So esoteric would be the body of Saturn itself. Exoteric would be the outer rings of Saturn. And the the false illusion, the mask of hidden truth, or sorry, a false truth, would be the outer rings, because it keeps you beating around the bush from getting into that inner wisdom at the core, at the root, the basic meaning, the understanding of where these things come from. So, <clears throat> the goddess Ishtar is also, or the goddess itself, the goddess figure, is associated with the fertility of the female ovaries, and thus the eggs which come from the ovaries, and the fertility of the bunny, because obviously bunnies represent nature in springtime, and the fertility. So of course this is why today we still have these ancient rituals of the Easter bunny and the fertility of springtime, and of course this is why we have the sexy playboy fertility bunny. And everyone knows that Ishtar is also the ancient owl goddess. If you notice the image of Ishtar, she's got the owl's feet. So she's the owl goddess of fertility and sex, also associated with Anana, or Black Moon Lilith. And most people will get lost in this understanding, think, arguing over the differences between these goddess figures, rather than looking at the common similarities between these figures because they're actually all the same goddess archetype. They're the archetypal goddess figure which represents the fertility and sex and which is 
the generative area. It's it's also the dark nighttime when the moon takes over from the sun. So this is when this is why they're called demons because they're deities of the moon. Day moon day moon day meaning death degrade decline all of these downward terms because the de essentially is associated with the root meanings of a downward decline of death the degrade the decay of the season from when the sun rises in the summer it ra rises ra isis it ra rises in the east and it sets in the west which is why you have ra and set which is why we get sunset from when the sun ra rises and then it sets and the sun is Horus, which is why where we get our word hours. And and in Spanish, you have what what time is it? Que hora es? Que hora? Hora? Horus. This is why in, in Judaism they have they dance the hora. They dance for Horus. And in ancient practice, in ancient mythology, there is twelve depictions of Horus. There is twelve versions of twelve Horuses. So there's 12 hours or horas or horuses in the day when Horus is tracking across the sky. So you ask somebody, what time is it? Where is Horus? What out in que hora es? Where is Horus in the sky? So he's the sun. He's the son of God traveling across the sky. And he is crucified at the end of and then he's reborn again when he rises the next day. So this is why Horus battles Set. And this is where we get Sun Set. When the Sun rises through the summer cycles and then it sets into the winter seasons. So this is and also the duality of day and night. When the moon takes over from the sunlight. So they're the dark demon goddess figures, which is not what we think that it actually is. It's just all cycles of nature and astrotheology. All of these archetypes and these traditions come from ast everything comes from astrotheology, which astro is the study of the stars, and theology or theos means god or deity. Astrotheology is making deities out of is is anthropomorph is archetyping deities from the stars and the heavens and the movement of the planetary bodies <clears throat> so again so she's the sacred owl goddess and this is why she has the owl's feet and of course the owl's wings and of course this is why the owl's face is the very same geometry of the sacred goddess vagina the vesica piscis which we all know is the symbol of Christ as well. It's the fish in the age of Pisces. The fish. So of course, this is why we always see Jesus depicted inside the goddess Vesica Pisces. And which is, it's it's the ichthys. It's the ichthys. The thighs of the goddess. The sacred, the sacred yoni of the goddess. The vagina. So of course, this is why we always see Ishtar, Inanna, slash Lilith, they're all the same goddess archetype figures, with associated with the owls and the moon of the dark night time. So this is why the Wicca, or witchcraft, is associated with the sacred owl goddess and the moon goddess. Because we all know that women's menstrual cycles are ruled by the moon. And the, the moon rules the waters, and the waters are a feminine principle. So the moon controls the tides and the waters also of our minds and our bodies. And this is why we go mental. And this is why we have lunacy. All of these terms come from the moon. And menstrual is also ruled by the moon. A monthly menstrual cycle. And of course, this is why we can also find the sacred fertility owl in the elite Freemasonic layout of the Capitol at Washington, D.C. and Bohemian Grove. And we all know that the sacred goddess and the sacred owl is also the symbol for wisdom. 
the wise owl sits on the wise old oak tree, or the tree of knowledge, where the log comes from, which of course is the very etymology of logic, and the logi suffix in our words, which means the study of, just like the very word etymology means the study of root, as in sacred tree, meanings which comes from Greek logos, meaning to reason, words, speech, discourse, or in other words, it's the study of, it's the wisdom, it's the knowledge. So we use, this is why we use our wooden pencil, which comes from the wooden log of logic from the sacred tree of knowledge, to log down our logic on the paper or the pipers which also comes from the sacred tree of knowledge. So of course this is why we all know that in biblical context to know someone means to be intimate with them, as in sex, which is why we say, I want to get to know you girl, meaning to get intimate with you. All original research and photo credits and images go to True Theory House of Wisdom. Christopher Lord, so please follow those and please share this information. Please share with all your friends and go ahead and continue to distribute this knowledge so that people can start connecting these pieces of the puzzle together and you know we can draw a bigger picture of what's actually going on in the world and what has been going on, how we've been fooled. So thanks for your time. Now I'll have a good one. Peace. My name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. Patreon has suspended this work and my account and income stream for this content. So if you are a supporting patron, then please, I ask you to move your support over to subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. And I have just established a completely free uncensored totally free speech social media platform that replaces facebook twitter youtube every other platform all in one on liftingtheveil.locals.com you can download the locals app and you can join our group and have totally free speech and totally uncensored unrestricted content access and um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content and I will see you guys in the next video. I rely solely on word of mouth and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore. My channel has literally been completely restricted. So I rely on your help by sharing my work around if you appreciate it and uh, leave me your comments. I definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff. And I will see you in the next video.